This broadcast has been brought to you by friends and partners of Alfano Ministries International. Thank you for partnering with us today. everybody. Welcome back to the 7K Revelation podcast. This is your host, Mark Alfano, with another amazing episode this week. You know, we have a, a special guest coming on. It's going to be Dr. A. Michael Shaw and uh, Daniela, Danielle Shaw. And uh, my wife actually connected with you guys at a uh, at a camp meeting not too long ago at the River Church. That's right. And um, so I'm so excited to hear your story, hear your testimony. And um, one thing I would do just kind of as a housekeeping you know, whenever uh, I started my podcast, people were, you know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to call it. I, I remember in the early days, I was like, oh, I was a broadcast podcast, uh, Zoom, you know, <laughs> and um, it was just kind of all all over the place. And as we did, um, what I realized was, is there was a common theme throughout every podcast. And that was that there's so many people out there who are doing major things for the kingdom. And a lot of times no one knows about it. You know, Ooh. it's funny because like I, the first guy I interviewed I sat and I was in Bible school with him and I sat in church with him for a long time. And uh, then I found out he was like doing missions in the Congo and stuff. And I'm like, wow, I mean, I had no clue, you know? And yeah. so, um, and then I, and plus when he began to reveal his story, it, you know, it was so in depth. So um, the Lord showed me uh, the scripture, you know, where Elijah is basically saying, God, am I the only one left? You know? <laughs> and he goes, no, there's 7,000 others that haven't bowed the knee to Baal. And so that theme kept coming up. And so the Lord gave me the name, the 7K Revelation, where we're just revealing the 7,000 out there that, that are doing this that haven't bowed the knee. And then the other part is, is that in Revelation, it says that they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I had a guest who pointed it out to me one time. He says, Mark, he goes, do you realize that the that's the in that scripture, they actually put the weight of the blood of the lamb equal with the word of your testimony, which we all know the power of the blood, but imagine now that the power of your testimony has the same power as the blood to set people well, free yep. and help them to overcome. And that was like a light bulb moment for me. I'm like, man, I never really even, I've read that a million times that I've used that verse so many times. I've, right. I never really put two and two together. And um, so that's why your testimony is so important. And then the very last part is when they were building the Tower of Babel, you know, when they were building the Tower of Babel, God looked down from heaven and he said, look, united, the people are unstoppable. Mm -hmm. And uh, and what I've seen in the church and especially in the Christian church and, and all over the world is there's such a division. You know, it's like there's so many different denominations and this and that and the other thing. And, um, you know, it's like we're so busy analyzing what everyone else does that we forgot about the main message. And that's Christ and him crucified. That's and right. so what what I decided, you know, when we were with the Lord basically showed me through the podcast was is it's this is about just leveling the playing field, you know, and and so whenever you get to know somebody, it doesn't matter where you're from or what you've done, um, as long as you believe the fundamentals that Jesus Christ lived, died and That's rose right. again and he's coming back again, you know. And so whether you're pre post trip or uh, sprinkle <laughs> or dunk, you know, all that stuff. Right. Um, hey, that, that's for discussion for another day, and it's not worth getting into it. That's right. Um, but anyway, so that's why we do what we do. So, hey, Dr. Michael A., Danielle, listen, welcome to the broadcast. I'm so excited. Let's hear a little bit about your story. Tell us about how you guys got started out, how you got saved, and um, and kind of what you've been doing. So let's let's just jump right in. Well, well, we, we, we just celebrate Jesus every single day. Amen. The name of our ministry is Perfect Love Revival Ministries International. And um, out right now, what we do uh, for the last uh, three years is, is basically traveling nonstop. Uh, we, last year, we traveled away from home. We live in St. Louis, Missouri. We traveled away from home 300, uh, let's see, uh, 348 out of 365 days. We're out. Uh, on the road, uh, preaching the gospel. This year, uh, we started out January 3rd, and we've been home roughly 18 days since January 3rd. So here we are uh, at this time. 
uh, about to close out the, the year and um, uh, ministering at hundreds of churches, revivals, outdoor crusades, uh, uh, community outreaches. Just uh, there's just the full gamut, going into schools, going into nursing homes, wherever the door is open. And uh, we'll go and do a conference with 30,000 people and go do a home church with two people the next day. Uh, so there's no limit. Uh, and we just go where the Lord leads. When we get called, uh, you know, when the Lord says yes, we just go. And so that's what we do. We believe in zero, no soul days. That means every day we need to touch a life for Jesus Christ. Amen. So Amen. if we're in the band and we realize, hey, you know, today we haven't really done any outreach. We maybe on um, we all really have off days. We only have on days. But uh, but 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 if we're there and we say we need to touch a life, uh, we'll get up and get get to the nearest Walmart or wherever we can find <laughs> where it might be some people and somebody's life will be touched. And, uh, and we don't do retreats. We only do advances. And we don't um, uh, have off days. We only have on days. And we don't take vacations. We only do occupations. So that's that's, that's our life. <laughs> I actually love the part of where we're able to just like go and touch lives along the way because as we said, we travel so much. So whether you're stopping at a gas station or stopping at a hotel before you get to somebody's house at the next stop, we're always touching a life and saving a soul along the way. So that makes it even more not just an event right. where you have to make it, but it's every little person's life that you touch along the way. That's right. We're, we're on a uh, quest right now to God downloading the hearts to win over 7 million songs in this season, whatever, however long that season is, but this particular season, 7 million souls for Christ. And so we've been uh, moving quite, 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 quite well. We've done some big crusades. We've done some smaller things. And as I said, we go everywhere the Lord says, and, and we broke over 400, uh, 517,000 is the number of souls won. That we wow, want, yeah, and so we're 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 again, you know, every single day we're we're looking to touch your life, you know. Um, our lives are real interesting, um, you know. Uh, and Danielle, she can tell you a little about how she came up in the Lord, um, and I'll share a little bit about some of the things that 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 have me to this point. You know, I um, I, I'll, you want me to start, or you want to start? I could still go first. All right. <laughs> Okay, so um, back up to the first question which you asked about when I made us get started this go around. You said about three years ago. Um, I just want to say like, it was right after COVID where we were like, you know, we need to get out there and start uh, letting people know that we need to bring the church, the people, of course, back together again. And um, so that's what we started doing. I was a teacher for 28 years before I started doing this with my husband, Chris, for story. And um it's so growing up in the church, I was um, actually a denomination. I'm not going to say which one, but I grew up and I, I always loved the Lord. I would even remember praying for like to get good grades on a report card. And it was so funny. It was like, I just remembered that not too long ago. I was like, oh, oh I did do this and that. And I, um, I do remember like just when I got into my 20s, I was like searching. Like, I want, I want more of God. Where can I get? And so I'm going around and going to different churches and different denominations. And I'm like, the whole time, I'm like, I have this thirst for just more of God. And so um, I think when I did find a church that um, had me lead my life to Christ again, it was full of joy. And it was like, it was like a, a 1,000 or 3,000, I don't know the exact number of the crowd that they had there. But everyone was laughing and, and just full of joy. And I would laugh too, but it was fit. Because I was like, I don't know what we're laughing for because I was never yeah. taught about Holy Spirit. So it was more like, I don't know so much. And then it, you, I think on the third day, I was sad. And I was like, I you know, I'm going to stop thinking. I want, I want more. Yes, I want so much to give to me, God. And I just like, <laughs> I pictured myself in the place completely empty and I was like God I'm reaching out to you and I was like lava just came out of my hair and just gave my whole body wow. and I felt like um, a cartoon character like I thought about we can just stretch your hands out and just do the budget 
and um and then I was still enjoying it and I was I was like that for like an hour. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, uh, I tell you, it, it's just wonderful. You know, ministry is perfect love ministries, perfect love revival ministries international. And 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 so I guess our, our theme message is always falling back on love, you know. And uh and 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 you know, no matter where you are, no matter what you're looking for. And a lot of people are looking at all the wrong places, all the wrong places, all the wrong things. But basically, we, there, there's a there's a desire in the heart of man to 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 seek out and find that genuine love, and we know that it's found in Jesus Christ. And mm-hmm. so, uh, for me, um, my 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 story goes way back. Uh, I was um, eight years old. My mom and my grandmother uh, left the Catholic Church and got involved in a Pentecostal. Uh, holy in this church, you know, holy rollers to the max, and and uh, I got saved at the age of eight. Um, I had been a devout little Catholic uh, boy up until that point, and got saved at the age of eight. And at ten years old, I had chronic asthma uh, as a kid. I was born with asthma, totally sick all the time. Oxygen tanks in the hospital, spending days and days in the hospital, missing tons of school. And uh, at the age of 10 years old, there was a young lady in the church that my mom and grandmother that we all attended. And uh, she had been praying for people that were getting healed. And she was 12, I was 10. And um, I had one of the most severe asthma attacks I ever had. And uh, I was by my grandmother. I, I did, I wasn't bringing me to school that day. And my grandmother was assigned to get me to the hospital if they couldn't get there and the break. My mom was a school teacher and she was at work, my dad. Uh, did some business and he was gone. He was, he was out of town, but I was really suffering. And so they called that young lady over to my grandmother's house. She came in and she told me to get up, get up. And I looked at her like she was crazy because I, you know, couldn't even breathe. And um, and uh, but I, I got up because she spoke with authority to me under the power of the Holy Spirit. And she pointed at me, looked me in my eyes, lifted my head, pointed at me, and said, "In the name of Jesus, you healed it." Never had it. Again, the asthma broken. I haven't had asthma since. Matter of fact, I'm like Forrest Gump. I get out there and start running. Back <laughs> life like, like, wow. you know? And so, uh, so, um, so I was healed, and I went from not being able to run, you know, uh, a few feet without having an asthma attack, to to now uh, being able to play every sport and everything. And I started immediately studying martial arts and for karate and, and kung fu and all. Yes. I saw a Bruce Lee movie kind of exciting me. But at the age of 10 years old, three months later after I was healed, I preached my first message at that little church. And the power of God fell. People were healed. People were laid out of the power. And um, and i never forget, I preached, uh, uh, I, I preached about just grabbing hold of the you know, hand of Jesus. And, um, and so uh, about... Uh, some months after that, I, I, I had the opportunity to have this uh, uh, amazing experience in the Holy Spirit, which was there was a, my grandmother and mother had left the Catholic Church, but there was a lady who had a young daughter, and her daughter was, uh, by all, all indicators, possessed. And she yeah. went to the Catholic Church, and the little girl had picked up the Catholic priest and he, he they, she threw him down the steps. He went running down the street. So this lady, in desperation, my mom and grandmother knew her, and they said, you need to bring her to our church. And so she brought the, the girl to the, the church, you know, full of fire, Holy Ghost, rolling church. And, and um, they were trying to deal with her, and she was speaking in very uh, uh, other voices and the whole thing, just a full manifestation. And me, having just started learning karate, I'm a white belt. I was ready to kick the devil out of him. <laughs> but 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 uh the Holy Spirit arrested me. And uh, I, you know, and, and when when I was healed of asthma, my my mindset was just miraculous. I believed God could do everything and anything. You know, I knew I went from not being able to breathe to now being able to do anything. And so uh the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and told me, asked me, why do you want to hurt the girl? He says, speak to the evil uh, spirit in her, tell it to the portal, never return in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And I did that, and it was, I said, in the name of Jesus, come out of her and never return. And uh, the girl collapsed. There was a big yell, 
And uh, and then when she came to, her eyes were clear, and she was fine. The family joined the church, and and and, and, and she was fine from that point. So I started preaching at, at, at that age, at the age of 10. And uh, up until 15, I was real strong in the church. All my friends, I, the, I led them to the war. I was reaching people in the community, just a kid, a young evangelist, just touching lives. And uh, at the age of 15, though, uh, my family got divorced because of religion, all right, mm. of all things. And, uh, uh, and, you know, it was it was a very devastating thing for me. I was the eldest um, of four kids, and um, it really hurt my heart. And I went, I would say, went from Luke Skywalker and Dark Vader. You know, I didn't want anything to do with religion. I still had a, uh, somewhat of a relationship with God, but I began to test the streets and test the world. And, and um, if some say I had success, uh, I don't call I, I call it my John years, you know. But I wound up becoming a martial arts champion. And, I, I, I did a lot of different things. I worked for the Shadow Department. I did some movies and made motion pictures, did a lot of things. But then in my early 20s, God snatched me back up. And, uh, when he snatched me up, it was just a divine miracle, and I began preaching again. And it had a lot of success. Uh, got into revival in the early 90s when Rodney came to the church where I was. I had been a, a singles pastor, then a, uh, then, then a associate pastor at at a, a very great church down in Louisiana. And uh, Rodney came through and, and uh, revival hit. And uh, I was just immersed in, you know, it was just powerful, powerful uh, time. Uh, and um, and then after being on staff at that church for, for some years, the Lord put on my heart to go out and save his kids. And I, I left the church, um, you know, stepped down from uh, my pastoral position and went out, um, and I went into the public schools to win kids to Christ, and won over 30,000 kids in public schools and, wow. in uh, in New Orleans, with uh, starting clubs, character education clubs, and I believe there's some similar clubs going on there now. But I uh, had some opportunities to do a lot of things. Uh, came and taught at the initial Bible college, uh, did some evangelism classes and stuff like that, wow. and, or, or, you know, with the river, and, and uh, uh, and you know, I I, I then started. Uh, you know, we started a church in New Orleans. And this church in New Orleans uh, grew uh, just exponentially. And um, when then in 2005, Hurricane Katrina hit, yeah. and uh, in one day, everything that I knew was whacked away. You know, uh, but we had grown a church to thousands, and we had the largest food bank in the southeast region. Was in Time Magazine for that, and. And uh, uh, I, was, I was blessed to have a friend in Rodney because I went out there and stayed at Grace Manor for a second, and he uh, flew back. Um, I was I went, went to site. I was in St. Louis, and that's where the was originally from. And uh, then I went went out just to visit with Rodney, and we flew back to New Orleans the first time going back, and we looked at the church and the different things. We knew that. That it was it was pretty devastating, but God had birthed in my heart uh, a vision and just keep going. And I never forget I was on a Joyce Meyer show, and she said, "How are you smiling? How are you so happy uh, and able to have joy in this time when everything just wiped away?" And yeah. I said, "Well, you know, uh, the 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 wind blew away, you know, buildings and different things, but it didn't blow away vision, purpose. It didn't blow away." You know, the anointing on my life, and we ever go for it. So, you know, um, we've been blessed. Uh, Danielle and I have been able to raise up work in uh, many different places. Uh, and um, we're looking to do some additional work in, in, in West Virginia right now, and apart from St. Louis and, and uh, in Virginia as well. Yeah. So we've just been blessed. Amen. So that's kind of. Where, where we are. Been, been everywhere you could think of. You throw a dog at the world map. We've been there a close ministry in the gospel. Uh, some wow. amazing places. Wow. And we're just excited to share the gospel. The good news. Amen. And, uh, yeah, I love, I love how you said that about, you know, that the wind blew everything away, but it couldn't take away the anointing, you know. Amen. I mean, we, we went through that in 2009, you know, when the economy crashed. We lost everything. I was at oh, wow. two restaurants and, and everything. And, um, 
I remember people say, you know, I say, look, you can take everything I have, but you can't take away the gifts that God gave me. That's right. You know, and that's so right. that's, that's, that's the only way to look at loss and things like that. It's like, okay, you know, I'm still alive. You know, that's right. the devil there's messed a, up because he left me alive. Song. You know? There's an old song. Yeah. This joy I have, the world, uh, I didn't give it, the world can't take it away. You know that's I mean? right. <laughs> yeah, I love it. That's really good. That's really good. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you guys are, are rocking and rolling out there. I mean, so your ministry, like when you first got started, I mean, you know, what was it like in the early days? I mean, was it like, hey, you walked in, all of a sudden you had a full calendar and, and things just blew up? Or were you out there just, you know, grinding? Well, you know, I, you know, I, I tell you, it's it's amazing. Um, you know, right now, everywhere we go, they want to extend, you know, pretty yeah. much. Uh, everywhere we go. Uh, the power of God's falling. You know, I've been blessed to be a, a a student of the Word. You know, I've taught at Bible colleges in the River and Bible colleges all around yeah. the world. Uh, I have uh, three doctorate degrees. <laughs> I wow. have a doctorate in education, which is a secular degree, and I've worked with school systems and worked with a lot of uh, school systems on national, uh, uh, regional, and in local level, both in St. Louis and in New Orleans, and help turn schools around, culture and climate, uh, guru, if you want to call it that, you know, kind of doing things and helping. Uh, but, but one of the, um, uh, but, but, and then the other doctorate, the doctorate of theology and the doctorate of divinity. And so, uh, sooner or so God's, God bless me. And, and again, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm, that's, that's not to write or anything. It's just something that I did because I was just, I, I, I've always been a, a uh, a person who was real inquisitive and, and wanted to dig deep. And so I wound up, you know, it's placed on my heart just to go to the school. So I'm, I'm studying. So it just, I just matriculated through, but, um, but one of the things that, that I did different than some who may go to Bible colleges and get zapped of all the money, <laughs> I, uh, you know, um, cause you can go to Bible college and just get beat, beat down. I um I I went in having having had the experiences that I had with my mom and dad getting divorced because of religion. Uh, I went in with the Holy Spirit and every Bible college I went to, um, I was able to maintain uh, what God was doing in my life and maintain the anointing and not not take on uh, just the indoctrination of 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 of, uh, of you know denominationalism or um, Anything that would just quench the fire, you know, and so it, it was a blessing. But, but what it did do, uh, it, it allowed me to forge uh, a sound word uh, in my heart. And so um, when I'm ministering, it's always line up a lot of peace and precept. And people are, are often really blessed and astounded by, by the deep revelation um, and, and how, how, how it can be, you know, one of the greatest compliments I got was from from a little kid who told me, you know, um, you you preach to, you preach and adults can understand, but you preach in a way that the kids can understand it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and um, it, it is really really great to hear that. But Danielle, um, she has some incredible gifts and talent. She's been preaching and ministering very strongly and uh, uh, doing a lot of women conferences that's coming up now. Uh, wow. But when, but I guess when you ask how 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 it happens, we 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 we'll go to the place and the power of God falls and pastor tell their friends and you know we're all pastors and they invite us and literally you know we 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 last year this year we preached in hundreds of uh, churches and ministries you know um, hundreds and it's just been a blessing to do that. Wow, that's amazing. And, yeah. Uh, I, go ahead. We have a unique thing, too. It's where um, the, most ministers are different. Um, everyone is different like that. But um, while he ministers the verbal word, I usually do the visual word when I'm um, doing art. Um, and I let the Lord to give it um, away to some people. We do have art that's for sale sometimes, but we we give away more than we uh, lose. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's really a blessing. She she does incredible uh, paintings and 
and uh, bless the churches with paintings, and they're hanging up every, they're hanging up in palaces and and, and embassies and mega churches and home churches and people's homes, and and that's just uh, amazing. She does three D art, and uh, it's it's uh, really really beautiful, and also uh, it just it just speaks to the people's heart uh and and helps add a little more brightness to their lives you know so yeah she, she'll she'll do a painting for the church as i'm i'm preaching and, and it really ministers to the people it really it's really a blessing yeah wow that's great mm-hmm. so so let me ask you a quick question you mentioned you worked in uh did some movies and things like that as well mm-hmm. so with with the hollywood world i mean you know is it all lost or i mean is there any hope in, in hollywood no you know god always has a remnant there, yeah. there are some real uh, solid Bible studies taking place in Hollywood. I call it Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, um, uh, where there are believers, there are people who are believers. There's some prominent actors who are believers. Uh, uh, Denzel Washington is one. I actually did a movie with Denzel and uh, Washington uh, called, you know, Pelican Brief. I had a, I was a stand in, but then there's one part that you see me in, you know, but I got paid for the whole movie. I had a really great time with that shot. Uh, a couple of weeks in New Orleans and 14 weeks in D.C. And, uh, um, but there, there are believers out there. There, there are people who believe. And then there's people who just get corrupted by, by what Hollywood presents, you know. Mm-hmm. It's unfortunate. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like politics sometimes, you know. Sometimes people go in with a good heart to do things and they get caught up in the system. And there's a system in Hollywood, you know. And I was blessed not to... That to, I was blessed to circumvent that that system. I never lived in Holly, Holly, Hollywood or Hollywood. Um, I, um, I, but I, I was blessed. I did nine major motion pictures. I was blessed. Just, I think it was just a, you know, it was just, it, you know, it's interesting. You know, God, when God's favor is on you, uh, whatever, whatever you do, you just kind of rise, you know, <laughs> and uh, and so. I was able to impact lives, um, and everybody on the cast and crew of the movies I did knew that uh, I loved the Lord and that I was an evangelist, you know, and I uh, was able to touch some lives, and that gave me a, 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 a certain respect, and uh, there was a certain decorum around me, and um, and so I, I, it probably kept me from being invited to some of the weirdness, you know? <laughs> yeah. So God kept me uh, through that, um, you know, not saying, you know, I, I'll say that uh, the, the the biggest piece and the thing that I I, I, I love the most is that I can look back on those times and it gave me an insight. And so when I meet people and meet different people, um, uh, you know, I I I'm never been like starstruck. You know, it's like the only the only people who have amazed me and I've been like wow are people who are highly anointed. <laughs> I remember yeah. walking into a meeting with Lester Summerall, who uh, who really he laid hands on me and blessed me, and, um, and, and 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 really spoke a word over my life. Uh, he, um, I remember walking into one of his meetings, just feeling the anointing, just so heavy like a quilt. And of course, you know, uh, the the you know, be the presence of Rodney and others, other great men of God, you know, um, you know. That's what I, I, I look to and go, wow, you know, God is awesome, you know, and yeah, give God sure. glory. Yeah. Now, do you think that you, having that background has opened up some doors for you to get into more, um, you know, venues? I mean, as far as like, because I mean, I in the I'm from the business world, you know, so mm-hmm. our, our whole thing is we teach marketplace evangelism. We're, yeah. we're out trying to reach the gated communities that people can't get into. Mm-hmm. And so when you have a background like that, do you feel like it, it does unlock a few doors for you to get into certain places or is no, it something I, you haven't pursued? At you all? know, I, 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 w- I wouldn't say that that, that is something that opens the door. Um, uh, not that I know of now, maybe in some of the secular uh, places. Um, yeah. But um, uh, again, I call it my journey years. I, I, I feel gotcha. like, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. I do want to say, you know, Danielle has the same background. You know, she modeled professionally, uh, modeled with, with one of the highest paid models with with uh, the the, the uh, Ford agency in the, in the city that she was in, and, and you know, so we 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 both have a similar backgrounds in that regard. But we don't. I don't think that that's what opens the doors. I'll give you an example. 
you know, uh, I, um, being a martial artist and karate champ yeah. and all this kind of stuff, and I taught self-defense for the sheriff's department in Orleans Parish and taught, taught in the statewide academy, taught all the basic self-defense stuff. Like that. But one of the things that I think um, uh, was powerful was that, you know, I, as, as as a young martial artist, I always wanted to go to Asia. I wanted to go to Korea, Japan, Thailand, those places and fight in Kumite, fight, fight in the, you know, in, in the rain. And uh, and when when God snatched me up in, in my early twenties, you know, I pushed pushed that to the side. I'm like, you know, I, my my focus is on on on, on this preaching, and, and so I put that away. It was something that was a was a dream that yeah, I felt would not be fulfilled. It's just over there. But you know, God yeah. gives you the designs of your heart. When yeah. He, he first came in the kingdom and all of His righteousness. So I was in. Uh, I preached at the First Assembly's Church out in um, in uh, Illinois, uh, and um, and the power of God fell. A woman got healed, got up out of a wheelchair. She had been a member of that church for about eighteen years. Got on the wheelchair um, and was healed. You know, walked around walked around the church, and everybody was totally like, it was like, there's no question, this is a miracle. This woman's been crippled her whole time of coming to this church. And so the power of God fell. So I left that church. I did an extended revival, and um, that church had been in revival for about a year. And I did like uh, I did a couple of weeks now, whatever. Power of God fell. People were healed. A lot of miracles. But what happened is, um, about a, a couple of weeks later, I get a call, and um, it's from uh, a Korean pastor, and yeah. and it gotten my information from the pastor of that church, Pastor Eric. And um, Pastor Eric told them, they asked him, they, cause they were touring revivals around the country, and they asked him, it was a group of pastors, and they asked him, did they know someone who had a real healing ministry? He said, I got one name for you, Mike Chilling, just left the church. I got members who couldn't walk, <laughs> walking out. And so, so it was really powerful. So they called me up. And they invited me to Korea. So I go to Korea. I, I, I actually preached the, for eight days to 200 senior pastors. Wow. All right. And, uh, and that, they opened the door to me all through Asia. And so I've been to Korea 30 times. We started a church in Korea, been to Japan 30 sometimes, uh, Thailand 17 times, all through Asia, all over, you know, uh, Burma, everywhere. And so what happened is I, um, I remember preaching there. I was doing a mass conference. There about 10,000 people. I'm preaching. And the power of God is falling. And I, I did a move, like, you know, something. I was talking. I did a punch. And I realized, I had a moment. I realized, wow, God gave me the desire of my heart. I'm wow. here in Asia. I'm preaching all over Asia. I know the culture because I, I being in the martial arts. I studied the culture so in depth. And I, I even could speak a little bit of Korean and Japanese. Mostly centered around martial arts and eating, right? <laughs> but yeah. but what happened is, um, I uh, I realized in that moment that God gave me this out of my heart. But I wasn't fighting physical fight in the ring. I was fighting right. spiritual fight for the kingdom of God. Yeah, that's and, good. Yeah, and so it, and so that but 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 how, that door those doors open uh, to where. The doors, doors open as a result of God's anointing, and no, it I wasn't about it. yeah, it wasn't the uh, you know the the Hollywood or any of that stuff. No, but, no, no, because I, <laughs> I I I was a, I was at a business meeting once, and they had a guy come in who was like a motivational speaker, oh, okay. but he was Christian and he was a uh, karate expert, and, oh, yeah. and he would break break you know, break blocks break, and do break, all this break, stuff. Yeah, 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 I he had you know, he had it was all about breakthrough and stuff. You know, it was his yeah. whole whole deal. Yeah. But he turned in his in in that hobby into uh, into like a career of uh, speaking. But there's a whole big difference, you know. Whenever you're flown in the anointing, Amen. Um, how God opens doors, and I can resonate with you, you know, because when we got into ministry and started traveling, you know, as a chef, there was places I always wanted to visit, and um, and I'm like, man, I had my bucket list of chef places to go, and um, mm -hmm. and next thing you know, you're in, you know parts of Italy and Paris and all these different that's countries. Right. And you're like, man, that's stuff that I had dreamt about. And I had laid it all down and said, you know, I'm walking away from that life to to take a life of ministry. And and like you said, the Lord gives you that desire of yeah. your heart, you know? 
Amen. And, and so I got a question for Danielle. So as a as a parent, you know, how do you balance you know ministry and family whenever you're out 350 days a year almost? You know, <laughs> a lot of phone calls, FaceTimes, and text messages, and um. It's, it's just a beauty, and they see it, too, that we're able to go out and touch so many other lives. They're really um, how children of us, I should say, instead of us being we're proud parents, they, uh, we can also say that as well. They're just like, well, I'm so proud of you. You guys are going out there and doing that. And uh, it's like the, the scheduling, though, for seeing our children all at once. Is the, is, they're all scattered everywhere. College and business, and, yeah. So, yeah. Um, it's just a blessing just to know that mine are out and doing well, and and I'm able to go out and touch other lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, how how many children do you guys have? We have five. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Come on. We 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 we're really blessed uh, to have uh, just wonderful kids who you know love yeah. the Lord. Um, That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I I I I guess it it works. Um, now it's just a blessing to be able to be together doing this now, you know, with uh, with the kids, you know, doing what they're doing, they're living their lives, and we're we're now able to just go together. You know, there were times yeah. where I went alone, or I had my entourage at home with theirs and stuff like that, you know, and um and everything. But we've been blessed to do a lot of work. You know, we've opened uh, eight churches. And uh, wow. we're looking to do some work, as I just shared, do some work here in Virginia, in uh, West Virginia. Uh, God, God's blessed us. Uh, th- there are some pastors who, young, young pastors who it's in their heart to start some some works, uh, ministry, some churches, and we're looking to help them to establish those. And so mm-hmm. our work is, is along that apostolic line at this stage of our lives. That's great. Um, well, we're not directly pastor it, although with these that with this current work that we're looking to do, we're going to be more hands to it uh, to help it help it be what be what it needs to be. But you know, you mentioned Italy. You know, started a church in Napoli. You know, you know wow. grew uh, really really fast. God's anointed us that when we establish these works, they grow. I mean, God yeah, just just grow and uh, and. Other places in the U.S. Uh, and then Korea, and then um, uh, church in Uganda, Africa, uh, yeah. and uh, in India, and so we've done, done some work around around the world. It's been, been phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. You guys look way too young to do all the stuff you've done. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that you know, God redeems the years. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I believe it. Amen. Yeah. yeah, I always say that it was funny because I look back at, you know, my early life and I was, you know, overweight and stressed out as a restaurant owner. And mm. so as I came to Bible school, my wife went from brunette to blonde and I lost <laughs> 150 pounds and, <laughs> that's and, and, and turned the clock back. You know what wow, I mean? Wow, that's amazing, man. Yeah. I mean, like, you're right. He does definitely redeems the years. And, and yeah. so like for us, you know, like it took us 13 years to have our son. He was a miracle. And so oh, he's wow. 11 now. Amen. And, uh, we're, and we're not spring chickens, you know, so um, well, so the Lord look, gave us a know, ministry. You, to... you look pretty young yourself. Man. Yeah. You're, you're, you're oh, thank you. Yourself. But, um, you know, when we launched out ministry, I just said, I, I hey, he's, he's... Say you, you look like a little whippersnapper. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. A whippersnapper. Uh-oh. I'll take it. Yeah. But, you know, it's funny because um, when we launched in ministry, I said, hey, you know, it took us so long to have a son and I'm not going to just go and travel the world and not take him, you know, yes. because it's that developmental years. And I'm not going to wait until he's 21 and then go. Yeah. And so everything we do, we do as a family. And what's been amazing is, is when we go to these foreign countries to watch him get up and preach the gospel. And it's That's like, smart. man, I just yeah. it's the fire like you, like, you know, eight years old. I mean, I got videos of him at eight years old preaching. That's beautiful. And uh and it's funny we were in we were in North Ireland this summer and um and one of the pastors was saying I you know pulled him out of of the service and took him into kids church and I was preaching at the in the adult church and then at the end I said hey what did he preach on and she said oh he did Acts one eight and um, was laying hands on the kids and 
Wow. And they sent me a video of it later and I was totally blown away. I was like, wow. I said, I just, you know, you know that they're sitting in the anointing and, and or, the, or the river, the kids church is just off, off the hook, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, but for me as a parent to see, you know, when your kids are really picking it up, you yeah. know, it's just, and, 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 it, and it isn't easy, you know, I mean, when you're traveling like that, cause you guys, I mean, the two of you are a little more flexible probably than the three of us can be, but, but we got to, I mean, he can, he can run. He can That's run with us, you know? That's it. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, and, and God gives you an anointing for it, you know. I mean, yeah. he definitely gives us. Well, gives and us that's the, the key, you know, just having that grace and that anointing. Because people say, "How do you guys do it?" Oh, yeah. oh, they look at they sometimes they look at Danielle like, "Oh, poor baby," and they're yeah. like, "I'm not dragging her; she's dragging me sometimes." <laughs> nah, I get <laughs> like, it. You know, it's like it's like, uh, but 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 we don't get tired. I mean, literally, no. we just go boom, 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 and and it's just a walk. It's just a blood. It's because and I tell people, we don't we we minister out of the overflow. You know, yeah. I mean, we minister out of the overflow, and it's so wonderful to come to the conferences there because you get that feeling, you know, and that yeah. overflow, and you go back out. But we stay filled. And, 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 but I tell people, I said, yeah, I said, I'm just ministering out of the saucer, you know, I'm not ministering yeah. out of the cup, you know, <laughs> and it's the overflow. You know? um, uh, I, I, I just thank God that we're able to just travel and just enjoy, uh, life along the way. You know, God put on our hearts to smell the roses along the way. Yeah, that's good. And so, that's good. so it's, it's, you know, we don't get tired of each other. I mean, we're, we're together all of the time. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and when we don't have to be together, we're together all the time, <laughs> you know, and we're ministering yeah. every day. So, so we're together, but, um, uh, but, but we're, we're really blessed and God has a way of, uh, just blessing us, uh, as, in, 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 it's just, it, it's just really, really, um, just magnificent and, and, you know, it's, it, Okay. Share share one of the examples, uh, but um, maybe the tell tell about the channel cabinet. I promise, sir, we love camping, and I promise that I would get get. We we we've done camping every kind of way you can think of, from a little pup <laughs> tent to a bigger tent to you know we've done done a little glamping. You know, we uh, we we were blessed um, to 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 with a, with an RV and we're utilizing the RV. We have some wow. stuff we have to get done on it now, but but we we had some incredible camping time. But I promised that I would get a cabin next time we would go camping, and you could tell us what happened. <laughs> so we went to a church and uh, we were just the power of God fell, and the daughter was so like um, touched by the love of God and everything that she was like. During our stays, we were staying a, a little bit away from the church. And during the stay, um, her daughter, um, the pastor's daughter, said that we could utilize her cabin while while we were in town to for the revival. And we're thinking it's just a cute little cabin in the woods. And we pull up, and it's like a whole mansion in the woods. Like wow, that was incredible. The different levels and games. It was just pretty incredible. <laughs> It, it was an incredible experience because we were on our way. I think we were in Virginia. We were in Virginia. And we were on our way, and there was a hill. And we saw I saw a wooden cabin up stuck in the side of a mountain. And I said, oh, man, hey, look at the cabin. I said, you know, I, I promised I was going to bring you to a cabin. But we, I promised that, you know, beginning of the year. And, and this was last year, actually. And I, at the beginning of the, of the year, of last year. And so now we were maybe somewhere around October uh, or so. And, uh, and so um, uh, I see this cabin. I say, yeah, I have a guy, you know, I, I got, we got to do a cabin, you know, and we'll figure out, you know, when we'll be able to carve out some time to do that. <laughs> and we got to that church and the fire got fell. And I never forget, the pastors, they put us up in a nice hotel uh, but um, we get a call at 11 o'clock on the first night of the revival. We're there for like eight days or something like that. And um, and the pastor calls us up around 11, 11, 12 at night and says, hey, she says, I, I don't want to bother you, but uh, um, my daughter was really touched and she wants to bless you with her Airbnb. She has an Airbnb. And we say, 
Really? Yeah. And it's, 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 a, it's a whole house and everything. She said, well, the thing is, is, you know, I, I don't know if you guys want to do it necessarily, but it's, <laughs> it's a cabin. It's like in the woods. And we're like, wait, what? A cabin? Wow. And so it was just, just a miracle. And I, I remember us sitting in the, um, they had a hot tub. And it snowed that that day when we yeah. went to the place. They were walking. And we were walking. Oh, we were sitting in a hot tub. I had a little cap on. We were in the hot tub. The, the snow is around the the area. It was just a fun time. I mean, and, and we talked about how, you know, it was just a total miracle and how God got blessed with the desires of our heart, you know. So, yeah, yeah. Real, real awesome. Yeah, I think it's funny because, you know, when you're out on the road, actually, I'm I'm more alive and, and running, you know, that when I come home, it's like when I get back to the house uh, for those those t- days, you're like, oh, man, I want to get back on the road right, again. Right, you know, I just, right, yeah. How do people live like this, you know? <laughs> exactly, you know? exactly. You know? You're like a fish out of water. You know? I know. It's <laughs> like, what do you do? You know, right. it's like, uh, and, yeah. and, it, and it, was there a point for you guys, though, where you had to, like, make that decision to say, all right, we're going to go all in with both, you know, both feet? Or, or was it something that just you just did from the beginning? You know, it, it, it happened. Um, so so it's real interesting. Uh, there was a little period of time. I, I, I and, you know, we came out uh, in um, it, uh, May of 2022. Um, uh, to the, um, to the, uh, meeting there, uh, and we met with, with, with Rodney, we hung out with him. I hadn't seen Rodney in a number of years. I hadn't, it had been a few years before COVID. I hadn't seen him and then COVID is yet, and I didn't see him during that period of time. And so we came, uh, to the, we came, we came to the, the meeting. And uh, when he saw me, he said, oh, you know, so some people you don't know, see for a long time. You got to get to know him again, but not this brother. You know, I to yeah. Uh, he, 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 he laid hands on the y'all and I. We hung out um, and, and played some golf and talked or something like that. But, but that, at that meeting, I had been doing some work with, with the school system. Uh, the superintendent who had been in New Orleans that I had, uh, he he had been a vice principal and principal at one of the schools that had those love clubs at all those years ago back in the nineties, and he had one of the largest love clubs. He saw kids go from being gangsters to 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 God fearing kids, you know, and, yeah. uh, and so he had now moved uh, to St. Louis and was the superintendent of the schools there in St. Louis, and he contacted me about doing some work with the schools. You know, I have a doctorate in education, and he wanted me to help. Uh, work with the alternative education and some of the other things. And so I've taken a position to do some of that uh, because we had the revival center, but we wasn't, it wasn't doing, um, what, 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 you know, we have other people uh, to kind of manage those things. So I, I, I said, yeah, I'm doing it. We're going to stabilize me from a lot of the traveling as the kids went off to college, the last kids went to college. And so, yeah, um, uh, it was interesting that y'all have been uh, doing the work uh, with the with the little kids and, and kids who have special needs and and um, and uh, with the school school system, and so I did. I was doing that work, and when we came out there and met met with Rodney, it was just just very clear that we needed to totally clear the slate, you know, hey. and uh, and uh, and we did that, and uh, we 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 did a number of different things. As the kids went off, we downsized, uh, really changed a lot of our lifestyle. They just started going, you know, made sure that we were lean and mean and fighting machine for Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we began to, uh, we were able to go out and we just stepped out by faith. You know, I, I, mm-hmm. I left, uh, um, contracts on the table for hundreds of thousands of dollars and they all uh, did as well. Uh, and uh, they really was trying to get me to stay and do more work, but I've done a lot of work. I've, I've, I've been all the national news for creating a college uh, career uh, academy within the alternative school for kids who were maybe first time offenders. You know, you get a kid who who just was fed up and decided to you know fight back or something, and they wind up in alternative school because they pushed the security guard or something. And, and so you have a kid who had four point oh average, but they're in alter- uh, alternative school with kids who want to be gangsters, 
and they're trying to live up to a, a certain standard, you know, try, try to present themselves as tough so they don't get beat up. And, and I saw kids go from having 4.0 averages in a regular school to coming to the alternative school and, and grades dropping down the Fs when I started doing the research. And so um, I, I, I knew that there had to be a hub within those alternative schools to allow those kids to be able to matriculate properly and not have the pressures of what was taking place. So it was a school within a school model and got yeah. national press and everything and, and uh, great accolades and you know, was able to do that. And did, did some other work, uh, just trying doing some turnaround work and helping. And, um, and, and so, but, but, but God said, uh, it was time to just uh, go, you know, and, uh, uh, we, we just, we just stepped out, you know, two thirds of God's name is go. So we, <laughs> we stepped out it. and, um, uh, it was a blessing to, you know, uh, stepped out and, and, uh, we, you know, we, we, we don't get any kind of retirement or anything for some years left, but, but, uh, we just stepped out by faith and God's has blessed us every step of the way. It's been miraculous and, uh, just divine miracles. And, uh, you know, I do have to thank, uh, Rodney for, just kind of putting on both of us. He didn't say it, but it just kind of just being there. Uh, we realized that it was time to just no holds bar and just go for the souls that God's put on our hearts. And that's what we've done. And so mm. from that moment, I mean, literally from the moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go so when it. I left the school, you know, they weren't wanting me to leave. And um, the principal, she was like, yeah. Oh, and she started following us. Like she was like, "I'm just gonna follow you on Facebook and everywhere you go. I'm just gonna just watch you." <laughs> well, her seeing everything that we've done and the lives touched and everything led her to go back and rededicate her her life Come to on. Christ. So it was it's just been beautiful. She's like, "I can't tell you how much you you've done that for me, and and it's blessed my life." And um, and like I said, I was an artist, so I did art up and down the walls of the school. And she was like. You bless the school walls before you left, and people come in and they just. Yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah. I can still touch lives at um at that place where I I was for so long. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's been really awesome. Uh, it's been um it's been a lot of fun, and we've seen things that we would have not seen. I know. Uh, and 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 it's great that. There's places that I, I I went and she didn't get to go uh, that she's now going, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's really great. And there's pastors that are getting to meet her for the first time, which is really awesome. And and so it's been phenomenal. Man. It's been really that's a blessing, good. and uh, we thank God for for what's happening. And um, we uh, we we're, we're excited about what God has to come. Um, you know. Uh, God has a way also of taking things that you do and then utilizing those things. You know, Romans 8, 20, all things work together for the good for the love of God, call according to his purpose. And one of the things that, that, that happened that, that helped me to realize God's connection, and I see it now even with doing that little bit of work in, in the uh, public school system in St. Louis. You know, I'm a preacher, but, but you know, here I am now helping with the school and it takes up a lot of the day, you know, but I still had, you know, my weekends off and I was on holidays and stuff. And I would take off when I needed to go do a revival, but I could only, I had to limit it for that period of time, but it was a blessing because I was there, you know, seeing the last kids off and stuff like that. But, but the big piece is the connection. And I'll give you the example. When I, when I was in New Orleans uh, as a young evangelist, um, I was first with the Church of God in Christ. I was highly on the I was going, I went to Bible college and I'm preaching at all of these, uh, churches and some of them were real prominent, you know, in the black communities, uh, through Kojic. And uh, when God told me to go and sit at this church on the other side of town, it was a similar to God church. Uh, and it was on the other side of town. It was predominantly 900% Caucasian. And I'm like, Lord, why didn't you have me going to this church? You know, why do you want me to go to this church? They don't even recognize my license and everything. And I sat in the back of that church uh, for for six months. But I sat in the back of that church whining for the first three months. And I went to every service because the Lord put on my heart to go. I went to every service. 
you know, why and God I said, look now people are calling me to preach, you know, as a young evangelist with yeah. church God, God and the Lord telling me, No, no, no. And I said, How do I support myself, Lord? And he said, Go and teach. Because I had the degree. I had a BA degree at the time. And I went I went and applied in all these parish schools and I got a job working at the school. And uh and 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 uh, because of my background, I already had a very successful background, and a lot of people knew me in the city. I I written a gospel stage play that toured you know, nationally and all this stuff, so they, they knew me. A lot of people knew me, and so it was so funny because I'm sitting in this church where nobody knows me on the other side, you know. And and so God had to take all that pride. This is the church that I'm in right now, but God had to take all the stuff out of me. But He told me to go and teach. And so I, I reluctantly went. I got a job to go and teach, but then I was bumped up immediately to be a director of the middle school. I didn't have the credential to be a principal, so but they made me a director. They just saw the leadership qualities. They knew my background. I knew I had done a lot of business and other stuff in the city and worked with the mayor and did a lot of stuff. And so here I am, this young guy, I'm working in the school, and I turn the school around. I get crack houses shut down that were right by the school because of my wow. political connections and different things. I was able to get a lot of stuff going. The the scores at the school shot up through the roof, the test scores and the standardized tests and all that stuff, and, and, and the attendance, everything, just every 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 um, uh, numerical indicator just went through the roof and, and turned the school around. So great faith, great faith with the superintendent. He was he applied, got medals and, and certificates and teacher of the year and all these different things, awards. And I did that for a short time. The three it was little it was three years, three school years. But while I'm there, I, I actually got uh bumped up to a single pastor at that church and, and that you know, going on that before I was full time. And when I went full time, that's when I quit working at the school. But what happened, it was a big impact. And so when God snatched me up to go in full time at this church and I'm, I'm there and I'm, life is great, but then God told me to go and save his children. And this is several years later and we've been in revival. I'm in revival. I'm, I'm on fire, you know, and, and, uh, I was only in the pastor on television with the pastor, with the senior pastor, you know, and, uh, 5,000 member church. I mean, big, you know, big deal. And and now God tells me to leave right in the middle. I mean, I'm comfortable, you know, it's great. Yeah. But He says leave and go save my children. And I knew yeah. He, yeah, it was just a hit, just like a slam, bam. And I told told the pastor, and and at first he was a little reluctant, but because he didn't know what where I was coming from with this, and and but then being in revival, he realized and they supported me as a mission. And I stepped out. And uh, in the first few weeks, for the first couple few weeks, we had over 4,000 kids accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior in public schools. You yeah. know, and, uh, and I grew, assembled a team. And so it, it, went, it was pretty phenomenal. But this is how I got back in those schools. Because of the work that I did in the schools as a teacher, when I went to the superintendent and said, hey, I want to do this, he said, Shaw, anything you want to do, you can do it. We know you turn stuff around. And I was able to, I got caught blind and I was able to go to, with a letter from the superintendent to every high school, middle school, and I did three elementary schools to the principal saying, by orders of the superintendent, I can start this club. <laughs> and we Man, started the love clubs, character education clubs, and Christian character education clubs at every high school, middle school in uh, New Orleans and three elementary. And the power of God just fell. I mean, kids just fell in love with Jesus and it made it cool for Jesus. And, and and those clubs went strong up until Katrina, you know. And then yeah, uh, yeah. And I helped to start those clubs in other places. Um, we did some stuff in Florida. We did stuff with um, uh, in different in Texas and Minneapolis and in Illinois. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let me ask a question along those lines. So whenever you um, you did finally step out, you know, obviously there's a lot of temptation to not step out because of financial, you know. Yeah. Hey, there's <laughs> The financial side of things, because in ministry, there's a lot of unknowns whenever you take that step right. out. Like I, I was interviewing Dr. Debbie Rich a while back, and she said, if you're going to make it in ministry, you have to be a water walker. You know, you have That's to it. learn to get out on the water. And and so were there ever times, you know, when you first got started out where it looked like 
man, you know, well, are we going to make it or what? You I, know? I want to talk about us. You know, yeah. we were living in a really nice neighborhood, you know, with all the bells and whistles. It, was a, it wasn't a gated community, but you might as well consider it to be so in St. Louis. We had about 3,000 people within our little community group. Uh, everybody rolled around in golf carts, you know, to yeah. get from place to place. We had our own grocery store there. We had our own two, two pools, one with a lazy river. We had multiple ponds, fishing areas, swimming areas, you know, um, trails, the whole thing. Uh, we had everything, everything except a hospital, you know, uh, yeah. dentists, you know, beauty salons, Donut shop, little grocery store, two, three restaurants, which different, you know, different types of restaurants from elegant to, you know, just to, you know, go in there, you know, and, and just hang out type of place. But, but, but we were really blessed, you know, in that community, you know, had, had all the cars and all the stuff we want, you know, and, 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 uh, and we, 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 we really, when we stepped out, we knew that we had to, Downsize. We have to do some things a little differently because we're stepping out by faith, uh, and 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 our initial faith is okay. We'll maintain all of this, but you know, you step out and you get a reality check, you know. And God, God wants you to build that faith, you know. And 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 so so we built it. We've been building that faith, and God has met us every step of the way. And uh, and although we have put aside some things. God replenishes and bless. I, a fine example is uh, last year we were um, in uh, last year in March we had bought a, we bought a new car. All right, we got we got a small car that was super gas efficient because we had some gas guns, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we had some gas guzzlers, and we knew that the gas guy wasn't we going to get, get, you know, we were getting around the time. We were paying a lot of money, you know, especially with the way the economy was, you know. Yeah. And so, so we knew we needed to do that. So we got this little car that was uh, a little efficient, you know, get 50 miles a gallon, you know, the park, something like that. And, and we loved it. And we had it from January. But then in March, we're, we're on our way to, a revival to do a revival in Pennsylvania, and uh, it's late at night. It's about eleven at night, and we're drunk. When it started raining really hard, it was raining then. It was drizzling, kind of raining all day. But but we hit an area where it was raining really intensely. If the car, the front wheel of that little car, hit a pothole on the interstate, and as a as a blue state, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It hit the, it hit the uh, pothole, uh, and um, hold on, let me go just hit this. And um, and when it hit the pothole, it uh, it um, hydroplane. It was ran into a guardrail. Uh, matter of yeah, fact, man. on our YouTube page, you can see a uh, little uh, highlights. Then y'all just posted something because we didn't post anything immediately about it because uh, I, I I don't like anybody. To, to think that uh, the adversary you know, didn't kind of win, you know what I mean? <laughs> and yeah. he, didn't, he really didn't because what, what transpired from there, uh, we were all the road headed to Pennsylvania for this revival. And so what happened is the car, the, the front wheel of the car on the driver's side hit a pothole. Uh, and when it hit this pothole in the blue state, <laughs> it hit a uh, hydroplane. And we went from the, it was two lane highway, we went from the uh, uh, fast lane across and ran into the guardrail. The car split around, hit, slid against the guardrail, hit the back, rolled off, bounced off, and went back across the highway. We were blessed. We didn't get hit by any other car, uh, no trucks or anything. Wow. But uh, we, so we get out of the car, every airbag deployed. The car was total. I mean, just from bumper yeah. to bumper. The back bumper was off, the front bumper, everything was smashed. You, I don't even know where the engine went, you know, and and and, and we, we 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 were able to get out, we get out, and we're unscathed. You know, a couple of little bruises from the airbag, but we get out and we unscathed. We stand on the side of the road, right, and it's still raining really hard. But other people are are hydroplaning, uh, and, and fell, fell off into the ditch and different things, uh, while we're standing. But 
but we were totally uh, okay. You know, when the paramedics and the police got there, they were totally blown away. And I happened to have a shirt on that said, Jesus is essential. And that God is she, had, she had a shirt on, her uh, shirt on, t shirt said, God is good all the time. And so the paramedics, they actually said, You guys are happy. Y'all are okay to me. How did y'all even make it out of that car? She said, He said, He always said, We have pointed to the shirt, you know. And he's like, and So we get to witness to these paramedics, we took pictures with them. They were blown away. Uh, they became our friends. The police officers became our friends. And, you know, um, and so it was just a awesome awesome celebration and, and, and but the car was total so they bring us to a hotel we get to this hotel and the hotel uh is right next to near near about, about you know a few blocks from uh the only it's this little town this little town that has nothing there's this they bring, we, they, we, we, but there's this uh, car rental place. So they said the next tomorrow you can get a car rental. You know, because I told them I said I have to be at the revival service tomorrow night. As, as it, it was a Friday, it was Saturday we start the service, and I said so. And so, so the next morning, get up, uh, and uh, I get up and I go I walk over to the car rental place, and I walk in and I talk to the guy, and the guy's like. Oh man, he said, I'm I'm so sorry. He said, I don't have any cars. He's like, I have nothing. You know, he said, he said, he said, I got bad news for you. He said, there's no Ubers in this town. He said, the only place you get a, 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 a car is that at, at the uh uh at the airport in Dayton, Ohio. He said, he said, he said, but there's no, you know, you know, that's an hour or something away from here. He said, but there's no Ubers and the, the taxi company closed at the beginning of the year, so there's no taxis. Well, you know, like, oh my goodness, man. He's like, yeah, you see, now there's a little lady who who will bring people to the airport, but she doesn't do anything on a weekend. You have to wait till Monday. I said, I, I don't know about that. That's unacceptable. I said, because I have to be at a revival service <laughs> on, t- yeah. on tonight. That was Saturday. This is Saturday. I had to be at a revival service that night. And so, um, so, so I walked back. He, he said, man, he said, man, uh, you know, so I, I walked back. And I, I walk in the hotel room and I tell the, uh, what what happened because it, and I was like, get anyway, go yeah. ahead and check. So so I, uh, so yeah, I open up my yeah. Uber app and I just click it, and immediately it dings like ding, and it says car twelve minutes away. I'm like whoa, hey, look, he said there's no Uber. So we wait, we were ready, we stand by the door. Uh, uh, we, Twelve minutes later, this Uber pulls up. There's a lady, and she has her son in the no. uh, uh, the passenger seat. The back seat is covered with stuff, and she sticks her head out. I said, "Y'all, we're like, yeah." She said, "Y'all are lucky." She said, "Uber's around here." So we said, "No, we're blessed." <laughs> and uh, we said, "She said, there's no Uber." She said, "I was going down the highway in my phone, dude. and I just went on here and clicked it." She said, "But I'm not even from around this area." She said, uh, you know, and so it was just so, so, uh, so, and so she, um, so she brings us all the way to the hour or something out of our way to the Dayton airport. And when we get there, we are, uh, just so blessed. Uh, and, uh, we get to minister to her on side and, uh, we, the, the airport was like, you have to have a ticket to get a, a flight. I mean, get a car. And we're like, it's, you know, it, it, anyway, we got favor with that. And uh, and then we call the people where our car had been told. And uh, and, and they, um, the guy tells us, he said, hey, I, it's a Saturday. He says, yeah, he says, boy, y'all are lucky. He says, nobody, this place is closed today, uh, but I happen to be here. You know, I was like, yeah, we need to get our, stick, our belongings out of the car. We had an accident last night. It was towed to your place. He said, no, well, I'm not the person to do it. The lady who does it, she's off. He said, I don't know. You might have to wait till Monday. I said, oh, man. And I said, well, we really need to get out the road. He said, well, let me call call and see. And uh, and so um, he called and called back right away and said, man, y'all, y'all must be blessed. He said, because he said, yes, and she was happy about coming to help you guys. I'm like, wow. So she's, you know, we get there, we get out the long days, we drive, we get to the church uh, um, up in Pennsylvania, and we have one minute before the service is supposed to start. 
So that's a miracle, and that's the kind of things that happen. The, the other part of the testimony is that uh, someone uh, sold the car in Tile Line. They managed to replace the one that was totaled. Oh, Amen. come on, man. <laughs> See, there you go. So, so that's the end of that testimony. So that is right? awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, so that's awesome. So it's been yeah, it's funny. Normally what I do at the end at the end of these at the end of the call, I normally have you give advice, but I mean literally the whole entire interview is all you've done is given advice. I mean, it's been amazing. I mean, it's been I, actually I think we have to do a part two. We Amen. have to do a part two with you guys because there's just so much. You know? right, you're blessed. Um we you know what? what? Well, I do have <laughs> one one bit of advice. Yeah. I have one one bit of advice. I, well, you know, a lot of people will look at this bottle yeah. and they say it's half empty or it's half full, but it's neither half empty nor half full. It's full. It's half full of water and half full of air. And the part you don't see is more important than the part you do see. And yeah. I just want everyone to understand that, you know, we walk uh, by faith and not by sight and, and that, that, that we have to begin to pay more attention to the part we don't see. You know, we're not to be led by every little yeah. thing that's happening around us, everything we can see, but be led by the Spirit of God. And so that's that's the message, you know. Um, you know, you can live for a few days without what's on the bottom, but only a few seconds without what's on top. But we pay attention to the part we see more than the part we know. So God bless. Amen. Man, I love it. <laughs> that is so good. I'm going to steal that. <laughs> <laughs> You want me to first. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going to steal it. <laughs> so, so what we'll do just to wrap things up, you know, is if there's anybody out there who's watching who, um, you know, you, if you love the lifestyle that these guys are living and you're like, hey, you know, I always thought being a Christian was a boring thing and that uh, I'd have to give up all, everything in life and, and take a vow of poverty and all that stuff. And um, But, you know, you see that there's a more excellent way to life, you know, yeah. that you don't have to. You don't have to live a boring life and you don't have to to uh, give in to all the things of the world. If you give up your life here now, if you're willing to lay down your life now, that you'll not only uh, gain it in the afterlife, but you also get it here as well. So God God makes promises to us Amen. like that. And so, you know, I think it's so important as a listener that, that you know, the, the listener has an opportunity to receive the Lord um, like you guys have, you know. Amen. So if you want to go ahead and just uh, go ahead and yes. lead people to the Lord, that'd be great. Well, first thing that we need to know is that, you know, you need to know that God loves you. He loves you so much, you know. And, and John three sixteen says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, and we said, We believe in Him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we just want you to know that God's love is, is there and available, and it's not about you fixing yourself up or, or being this perfect person. You know, God, God is not looking for ability. He's looking for availability. And he'll 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 pour out his spirit into you and make you able to do whatever you need to do and whatever he needs you to do. And so um the you know, salvation is a gift and it's a love gift from God. Amen. It's a love gift from God. Perfectloverevival dot com. If you uh if you're listening online, that's perfect love revival uh dot com. And so on there, when you go to their um to their you know, um to their website you're actually going to see a tab at the top that says um, that says give, and so this is so important that you know we get behind their ministry. I'll go ahead and share your uh, this guy. Let's pull it share up. There's some of your artwork. Um, I see on here. There's your home tab where you're in there preaching with the fire. I love it, and so uh, I love your uh, website. It's beautiful. And uh, but here, this is important, guys. So one thing about ministry is ministry is funded by they always say it's funded by the widow's might. That's what our pastor always teaches us, you know. And so a lot of times people, they say, well, I don't want to give because I, I don't I, I don't have a big number to give. But you know what? Every little bit counts. And so even if it's a little bit, uh, it makes a big difference. And so here is a couple QR codes. You got the Perfect Love Revival Ministry International for Zell and, uh, and also their Venmo accounts on here. And then you can also mail your gift into 1200 uh, Lake St. Louis Boulevard, Lake St. Louis, Missouri, 63367. Uh, make your check payable to Perfect Love Revival. Um, and, you know, guys, don't don't mail. Just go ahead and do the automatic thing because they're only home six days a year and they probably never pick up the mail anyway. <laughs> do a lot with Pakistan as well. You have your sewing center. Then you have your love uh, 
the uh, clubs you were talking about here. So you, that's still going. Uh, and then you, you do your art and then uh, orphans and widows. You know, I get calls every day from Pakistan. I, I can't ever tell if they're real or fake. You know, Perfect Love Revival, Facebook and YouTube. Make sure you like, like and subscribe and share. Let's get the word out. And uh, give it a thumbs up, hit the bell. Yeah, they have a lot of amazing things going on, whether it's here, Pakistan, Perfect Love, Revival Ministries International. Man, what an amazing interview we had with them. It's, um, you know, just an amazing couple. They're out there getting things done, guys. Make sure you get to their website. Let's uh, partner up with them. You can go to the giving tab. Just go to perfectloverevival.com and you'll be able to see firsthand exactly what they're doing they have some new books out. You can go to Amazon. You can check them out. Just look for Dr. A. Michael Shaw. Just do a Google search on A. Mike, Dr. A. Michael Shaw, and you can go into Amazon. You can find his new books. Just some amazing content that they're putting out. And we just want to get behind a ministry that's actually out there getting it done. So listen, guys, if you like that and you'd like to see more of that um, and then more of the content, you could actually be a partner with us, too, at, at Alfano Ministries. You know, we're Alfano Ministries International, or you can go to alfanoministries.com. And on our uh, website, you can actually partner with alfanoministries.com. If you like the content you're hearing and you'd like to hear it uh, again, just, um, you know, click on there, become a partner of our ministry, and, and maybe just support, uh, sponsor one of these broadcasts. It'd be great. Um, so that's all I have for you guys tonight. And I'm um, sorry for the, some of the technical difficulties we had here. Um, but overall, it was a great, great show, and I was so happy to have Dr. Michael, A. Michael Shaw, and um, Pastor Danielle Shaw on our broadcast tonight. Well, that's all we have for you tonight, and um, until we see you again, bless you. This broadcast has been brought to you by friends and partners of Alfano Ministries International. Thank you for partnering with us today.